Well, with half a billion adults worldwide living with diabetes, more focus needs to be placed on the condition. Uh, that's what Dr. Ava Orson said, and she joins us now alongside Owen O'Hagan, who managed to reverse his type 2 diabetes. Owen, uh, good morning to you good both. Morning. You both yeah. Owen, can we start with you? Uh, did you have pre-diabetes or were you diagnosed with type 2 um, diabetes? I was diagnosed in 2017 with diabetes. Uh, never treated for it because uh, I had decided that I was going to change my life for once and for all, but it took uh, COVID last year for me to do that, to start walking, start exercising, and... Uh, this year, with the inspiration of Mark Kelly from Ennis, a friend of mine who lost 29 kilos in 12 weeks with Eva, um, I joined the Orsman Clinic and, uh, in Galway. And uh, since then, uh, in 14 weeks, lost four stone or 26 kilos, or as I say, 29 bags of sugar <laughs> off my body. So in 14 weeks, yeah. you lost four, just over four stone, three pounds. In, in 14 weeks. Yeah. And are back in the wedding suit that you wore. I mean, like it, it's incredible. Uh, how did you do that? That must have been an incredibly restrictive diet. Uh, my friend, my best friend is Will Power, and uh, he has been leading me through this. I'm determined, and I've been determined. I, determined, I was determined to give up cigarettes years ago, and then drinking, and then this uh, was to get fit and to uh, grab a hold of my life because there's a history of cancer in our family yeah. and I know that being overweight can bring cancer. I lost two sisters to breast cancer. So it was important that I try and uh, change the family history and change the future for us as well. So uh, this diet, uh, the Orsman diet and Corte Aviva is, has changed my life literally and changed my family's future. So the Orsman diet, so you sought help from Dr. Eva. Is this something that we're seeing? Are we seeing that people can reverse? Absolutely, and I have been focusing on in my clinic in over four, 15 years now, and it's incredible what a life-changing event is, is, but the thing is that the diet is not that impossible to do. No, There's a lot of vegetables, and you actually eat all the time. People usually say, actually, I'm eating now more than I ever used to eat, because it's the fibre content, you know, it's, it's the value of the food. So eating the right foods, yeah. Exactly. But can we just take a moment? We are, we are talking about type 2 diabetes here, Absolutely. which is something that is developed in adults when they're older. You type can 1 you is can completely different. It's something from when your childhood, and that's a deficiency of It's insulin. an autoimmune disease type 1. We, yes. we can only reverse type 2 diabetes. Type 2 diabetes lives in the visceral fat, in the visceral cavity, and that's where the insulin resistance comes from. So basically, initially, the body produces more insulin to try to get the sugar readings down because the body for some reason is basically resistant for the action of the insulin and that comes from the visceral fat because that's we are not supposed to carry what visceral fat, fat? What, what is it? visceral fat is that deep fat that you basically see when your body your tummy start bulging out and I had lots of that so is that the you signs like what fat. signs do people need to look out for you see initially the problem is that you might not have any symptoms you might just feel a little bit tired or you might have nothing for years it could take 10 years that it's silently in your body and these increasing first insulin levels and then sugar readings they're basically making the damage and sometimes the first symptoms that people get is that they wake up in ICU after a heart attack and sometimes it's just you know thirst lethargic you're getting more you know trash infections you're getting urinary tract infections but the problem with diabetes is that it affects every single part of your body and obviously we hear about the blindness and the amputations and obviously the scary thing is that it really cuts down years of your life but most importantly your quality of life is affected um, now, because I know that there are an awful lot of people who are who are undiagnosed around the world, and this is a, a kind of a very modern disease that is developing more and more. But Owen, for you, did you feel in yourself you were like, "There's something wrong here"? Did you know that there was something up? Were you feeling sluggish? I would be a lazy person normally, and uh, I would spend a lot. I spent a lot of time sitting on a couch at night time watching television. I worked hard. I work in the film industry, so I work hard during the day. But when I came home at night time. I just veg on the couch right. and I would uh, gorge on pasta, gorge on potatoes, gorge on rice, uh, fast food takeaways. And uh, in the last 14 weeks, not one chip has crossed my lips okay. and it won't in the future because I now have respect for food that I didn't have before. I use it for fuel now. Instead of powering a day, it just fuels my day. And where did you get the inspiration for this? Because uh, as you said, you were a lazy person. 
you're not a lazy person anymore or you're still a lazy person but you actually tried to eat right? Well, I was until I damaged my foot there a few weeks ago but uh, uh, I have been walking now. Since the start of COVID last year, I started walking inside two kilometres, inside five kilometres, what we could do. Uh-huh. And then uh, I got uh, shingles in October last year which cut the legs out from under me, literally, excuse the pun. And uh, I realised that the weight was coming back on again. My friend Mark Kelly in Ennis, he got inspiration from me walking last year and he went to Eva's clinic in Galway. He lost 29 kilos in 12 weeks. Uh, he, he was my inspiration. But um, it is a restrictive diet. Like, were it, you down to like 800, eight, I was, 800 it's, calories? I think it's 700 calories a day. Now, wow. but I had, I had porridge for breakfast. I had uh, black coffee. I would have a croissant maybe for breakfast. But it, do, you have to keep that, do you have to keep that up now, 700 you, calories a day? Uh, no, 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 that's no, level no, one. No, that's level no, one. No, so you can move no, on from that. Absolutely. The yeah. whole thing is it goes through phases. We're starting. Now, maybe you started a little bit higher. Usually depends on the initial weight that the person is. We adjust the diet according to a person. So it's a very personalized plan. But basically, it's based on high fiber vegetables. You cook vegetable soups from scratch. So you actually eat three meals a day. And then we use the supplement which are high protein like porridge we have all the substitutes we have high protein bread so you are not hungry and the most important thing is that you go in ketosis so after three four days the hunger goes and it's the energy level that usually people say that it's the first thing that they noticed the energy just coming back and then for you it was also the snoring my that wife Ruth uh, got relief from me so I stopped snoring I was like a train in bed at night time and, and that I is stopped. usually a sign of you know sleep apnea Can which means that people wake up they, they wake up in the middle of the night without knowing it and they wake up tired and the only way really to, to uh, help with sleep apnea is to lose weight or using a CPAP machine which is often quite you know no, intruding for people. And it's expensive. I hear you, Dr. Eve, as well, because as we mentioned there, a lot of people are undiagnosed with this. It is becoming a, a real problem all over the world. We had Dr. Uh, uh, Professor Roy Taylor on a few weeks ago saying that people should fit into the genes that they wore when they were 21 years of age. Now, we had a lot of people messaging in about this. You are now asking for the government to screen people's waistlines. Is this... Because it's the easiest way, because we know that there are around 100,000, could be even more people who are walking around today having diabetes, not knowing it. And these are the consequences that are silently creating in the body. And it's obviously taking people's quality of life when they get sick, but also it's very costly for the government. So if we just did a simple screening, Mm. for example, HbA1c test will really clearly show Uh, if you are sort of getting to the pre-diabetic stage. And I think that if people knew that, gosh, I'm pre-diabetic, I think that would be the inspiration that they would need. Is it as easy as just taking someone's waist? It's very easy. If your waistline is more than half of your height, every centimetre represents one kilo of excess weight. So let's say as a woman of my height, if your waistline is 90 90 centimetres measured at the level of your belly button, that means that you have 10 centimetres extra. That's 10 kilos which basically is 22 pounds, which is a stone and a half. 10 kilos. 10 kilos. But it's not always the case. Like we'll say in in Asian countries where there is an increase in in type 2 diabetes, it's it's not exactly linked to their BMI. And there's an awful lot of people who are going around with bigger BMIs who who don't have diabetes. Yeah, because it's the personal threshold threshold that we don't actually know why some people are more susceptible than others to the effects of the fat. But for example, Asian people, um, all the Asian population are much more susceptible for type 2 diabetes because apparently there's something to link to the pigmentation. We don't know everything about diabetes yet, but we know the risk factors and we do know for a fact that overweight and obesity is the biggest driver. And that's why we are trying to bring the awareness because these numbers are going up with huge speed. And obviously, because they're linked to the overweight and obesity, COVID made things worse because people have been putting on weight, being home, looking comfort from food. They have less possibility for exercise. Yeah. So really, what, what the message here is that, first of all, weight does affect your overall health. Well, it- and you can reverse your diabetes and you don't need to be superhero to do the diet. It- what people need, they need specific advice. And if you want to lose a lot of weight, you need somebody to hold your hand well, and you, give you, you the have guidance. To do it. You, you have hold to, your hand. But you have to do it. You have to do it safely. hundred percent. That's what we're saying. And if you are feeling in any way that this has uh, triggered something in you, please do go to your GP. Absolutely. Get as much as you can. Um, if you've got any but opinions also, on this, it's oh eight nine six triple one triple one. People you always have, talk about the COVID stone that they've had and almost kind of like a badge of honour. You know, it's just you know, you put on the coat. Where exactly this is a pro- obesity is becoming a real problem, and I think health okay. and exercise 
But uh, you know the, the intermittent fast and things like this are very but good. If you if you are Listen, interested, if you are interested, unfortunately we have no time. Dr. Eva Osmond, thank you so much. And we oh, are going to you. be in Red Car thank Roundabout you. Hotel tomorrow from two o'clock, having a diabetes education day with Owen. Owen and tickets are on Event Pride. Lovely thank stuff. you both very much thank for joining you. us this morning. <laughs> Cheers. Now, still to come, legendary GAA manager Mickey Hart chats about his memoir. And from Pearly Whites to a Golden Glow, the Skinner is getting us prepped for the festive yeah. season. We'll be back very shortly.